The protagonist of this groundbreaking news is Huawei. On October 18, Huawei officially announced its successful contract signing for the largest energy storage project globally, the Red Sea New City Energy Storage Project in Saudi Arabia, with a capacity of 1,300 megawatt hours. For Huawei, securing this major project signifies a significant breakthrough in its continuous efforts in the energy storage field. Interestingly, prior to this, a U.S. think tank published an article in a foreign policy magazine, warning the White House that the energy storage industry might witness the emergence of the next Huawei. Little did they know how quickly this prediction would become a reality, why did the United States issue such a warning? Do you all remember why Huawei drew the attention of the United States in the first place? It was due to telecommunications. Telecommunication equipment forms the foundation of American telecommunication dominance. It not only provides economic benefits, but also allows them to eavesdrop on Angela Merkel's phone calls and monitor the website's Emmanuel Macron visits. In crucial times, it enables remote network attacks and disconnecting your internet cable. Such a critical industry is undoubtedly worth protecting at all costs. Energy storage, in a certain sense, is no different, so, what is energy storage? In simple terms, it is a system that stores excess electricity and releases it when needed. Why wasn't it used before? That's because the world was striving for carbon neutrality, and achieving carbon neutrality requires four types of power generation, nuclear power, wind power, hydroelectric power, and solar power. Among them, nuclear power is the most ideal, but its high technical requirements, the risk of being used for weaponry, and environmental concerns make it unlikely for large-scale global USE.AS for the remaining wind power, hydroelectric power, and solar power, they all share a common drawback, they cannot provide power 24-7. There may be excess power generation when electricity is not needed, and when you need electricity, the sun may have set, and the wind might not be blowing. This is where energy storage systems come into play. Why is energy storage so crucial? Because it needs to be connected to the power grid, and once connected, it can collect your power usage data. By analyzing this data, it can determine where the key electricity consumption areas are, how the military, industrial, and commercial sectors are distributed. In critical moments, it can be remotely controlled, cutting off your power, shutting down the system completely, and unplugging your power lines. But don't worry, China has already strategically positioned itself in this vital industry, the energy storage industry is preceded by the battery industry, and China commands a staggering 63% market share in batteries. In the precursor industry of lithium mining, China holds one-third of global production through both overseas investments and domestic extraction. Whether it's from controlling the supply chain or market share perspective, China stands as the global leader, far ahead of the competition. At present, the energy storage industry is valued at $40 billion in 2021. However, according to estimates from Bloomberg, this market is expected to grow 15-fold by 2030, and this projection does not even factor in its security benefits. Drawing parallels from the telecommunications industry, it's clear that the future of energy storage will divide into two major camps. The year 2022 witnessed an explosion in China's energy storage industry. Nationwide, there are over 65 megawatt scale energy storage stations in the planning or operational phases. By 2030, the investment in new energy storage projects in China could exceed 1 trillion yuan. Surprisingly, in just the first 10 months of 2022, the total investment in energy storage projects in China has already exceeded 600 billion yuan. Meanwhile, countries abroad, including Europe, the United States, Japan, South Korea, and even Saudi Arabia, are all strategically positioning themselves in the energy storage market, matching China in terms of timing and scale. So, what exactly is energy storage? The surge in energy storage technology is closely related to China. 
The most famous form of energy storage is battery technology, which was invented back in the 19th century and has since evolved into various storage devices, ranging from small heaters to large-scale photovoltaic and hydropower storage facilities. Energy storage has gradually become a fundamental infrastructure, but it truly took off in 2020. That year, China introduced two carbon-related goals, carbon neutrality and peaking carbon emissions, sparking a global energy revolution, and energy storage evolved in response, according to the International Energy Agency's guidance, new energy electricity can be classified into four levels. When it's below 15 percent, it causes only a minor impact on the power grid and doesn't require energy storage. When it's in the range of 15 percent to 25 percent, it necessitates the introduction of energy storage equipment. However, when it exceeds 25 percent, the power grid faces significant challenges and all power plants must be equipped with energy storage to cope with the fluctuating power supplied. In this scenario, the surge in energy storage becomes a natural progression. It can store electricity during the peak of new energy electricity generation and release it during off-peak periods. This way, regardless of the fluctuations in new energy electricity, the power grid can maintain balance. Therefore, developed countries with advanced power grids started planning energy storage early, especially those countries that have embraced renewable energy and regard energy storage as a significant project. Among these regions, Europe was the earliest advocate of renewable energy transformation. Therefore, they have a large market for energy storage. Not only is energy storage growing rapidly among consumers, but the policies of various EU member states are also very progressive. In addition to tax breaks, some costs are exempt, and capacity restrictions are even lifted in certain cases. In the United States, due to their early industrialization needs, they also started early in establishing energy storage facilities. Twenty years ago, the federal government and various state governments in the United States would introduce policies almost annually to encourage businesses to build energy storage projects. Furthermore, in 2019, the U.S. Department of Energy allocated $100 billion to create a long-duration energy storage initiative, encouraging energy storage companies to develop 10-hour energy storage systems. They hope to reduce the cost of storing energy for 10 hours by over 90% within 10 years. With the accumulation of technology and robust policy support, the United States accounted for over 32% of the world's newly added energy storage projects in 2020 and 2021, making them the global leader in this field. In Asia, Japan and South Korea also have ambitious plans, but their land areas are much smaller than other countries limiting their scale in renewable energy. Although they initially had strong technological capabilities in the battery sector, China has overtaken them in recent years. Additionally, these two countries have faced challenges. Japan heavily invested in hydrogen energy and missed the development of lithium-ion energy storage, while South Korea experienced a series of accidents in their energy storage projects slowing down their development. As for China, although it started later, it has not lagged behind in terms of policies. Since the introduction of the dual carbon goals in 2020, China has mandated that new energy power plants should develop in coordination with energy storage facilities. T can be said that whether in the Chinese or international market, the competition in the energy storage sector is even more intense than that in the earlier electric vehicle battery industry. Electric vehicle batteries are mainly developed in a few Asian countries, while energy storage is a global battleground with a market size potentially reaching trillions of dollars. In terms of resources, China is the world's most abundant source of vanadium, accounting for 42% of reserves, and most of it is easily extractable vanadium titanium magnetite. In terms of safety, all vanadium redox flow batteries use a dilute sulfuric acid solution containing vanadium ions as the electrolyte, which does not combust or explode. Furthermore, since it's a liquid electrolyte, it can be stored in external tanks, not occupying resources inside the battery. 
By increasing the external vanadium electrolyte, the battery's capacity can be expanded, therefore, the vanadium redox flow battery, with its abundant resources, safety, and greater capacity, has become an excellent choice for replacing lithium-ion batteries in energy storage. Moreover, it is leading in the deployment of energy storage projects and can help advance both of these battery technologies. Why is this so? Firstly, all batteries are essentially energy storage technologies, but they can be categorized into three types based on their applications, 3C batteries, consumer electronics, electric vehicle, EV, batteries, and energy storage batteries. These three types have different performance requirements. For instance, 3C batteries and EV batteries are used in consumer products like smartphones, laptops, and electric vehicles, while energy storage batteries are used in commercial applications such as base stations and power plants. Consumers have high performance requirements for batteries, such as the need for high energy density for durability and fast charging and discharging to save time. However, commercial applications for energy storage batteries do not have such stringent requirements. Cost effectiveness and safety are the primary considerations. Therefore, when battery technology is not yet mature, tech companies can initially apply it to energy storage, and once the technology and performance are ready, they can then introduce it to the consumer market, reducing the research and development risk for businesses. For example, when developing lithium-ion battery technology in the past without energy storage, the goal was to simultaneously lower the price while improving performance and safety, which was a challenging task. But now, this approach is no longer necessary. Companies can focus on improving the price and safety first and participate in energy storage projects, allowing them to iterate on the technology while earning money. So, what tech giants are not only targeting in the energy storage sector but also the next generation of battery technology? In industry terms, it's a battle among giants, a contest to create the next dominant player. This phrase holds true, especially when you look at the financing of sodium-ion battery energy storage in China. Over the course of two years, a total of 37 companies received funding for sodium-ion projects. Behind energy storage lies not only a country's strategy for renewable energy but also a technological competition. China hopes that its tech companies can achieve victory in this arena, similar to what Ningda Times has accomplished. Accomplished. Accomplished.